Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story, real estate forces me onto a rent payment system which charges a fee, or pay by check. The second story, boss said to go for a break during my lunch, so the next day I left a lot of customers and went to eat. The third story, scammer wanted to get into my computer but he still did not understand that I had Unix, not Windows. The first story is, pay by check, you got it. Last year I vacated a rental property in which I had resided for a few years. It was a pretty standard affair. Real estate agency, REA, was helpful. No real issues to report. They structured their business with a local office, which as far as I know simply handled the affairs of the tenants, with a home office located elsewhere which handled the back end and finances. When I signed my lease, I nominated to pay by bank transfer or electronic funds transfer. It's my preferred way since I dictate exactly when the payment is made and how much. I can also set it automatically so I never have to worry about it. Keeps the stress away. At the time, it was also the REA's preferred payment method. Well, part way into my tenancy, I received a letter stating that my REA was changing banks and that for the time being, they were no longer able to accept EFT payments. They would have all tenants migrate to a third-party payment system. I was already unhappy with this decision since I didn't want to involve a third party regarding my rental payments. It seemed so unnecessary. The kicker, which really peeved me off, was that this company charged a fee for making your rent payment. A little digging into the motivation behind this change was quite revealing. In my country, REAs must use a trust account, a bank account to handle money on behalf of other people, the owners renting out their property. Typically, these involved a different fee structure and sometimes have a certain number of free transactions. Part of the REA's job is to reconcile these accounts to properly allocate money to the right portfolios. I did some research on this other third-party company to which I was supposed to make these rental payments. They handle rent payments and the bookkeeping on behalf of REAs. It seems they don't charge the REA for this service instead of making the tenants pay for it. They also charge different fees depending on your payment method, which they conveniently don't advertise on the website. You only find out when your REA sends you the sign-up form. In essence, my REA wanted to save some time and money by throwing me, and presumably the rest of their renting portfolio, under the bus and make me pay a fee to pay my rent to a dubious third-party company. I was livid. Thankfully, my state saw these SH heads coming. In rental tenancy, they specifically state that an REA must provide at least one method of payment which does not incur a fee, beyond banking fees. My agency of course did this, but used the most obnoxious method possible, personal check. They knew people would be pressured to sign up for this system if their alternative was to write checks. But hey, they listed it as a valid form of payment, so cue the malicious compliance. I called my bank and immediately ordered a checkbook, shortly followed by an email to REA stating I would be making my payments via check from now on. On my way home, I stopped by my post office and picked up some registered mail envelopes. Game on, effers. I was actually excited to do this, as I had never written a check before. I had a spreadsheet made with all the information I could record. Check number, mail date, delivery date, cash date, tracking number, amount. You name it, I kept it. I also kindly notified REA that I had mailed a check and provided a tracking number so they could keep an eye on its delivery. Well, well, well. Several days after the first check arrived, REA's head office called me. They give me a grand story about how this new system they've migrated to is so good and how safe it is and how it's so convenient. I let her waffle on for a while and simply tell her that I'm not comfortable letting a third party handle my rent payments. I then tell her I'll think about it and hung up. I had no intention of changing my mind. Next day, I sent off another email stating I've considered it and I will remain paying by check. A few days before I mail my second check. Yes, I'd only sent a single check at this point. I get another phone call. It's head office again. They're asking me to reconsider migrating. Out of the hundreds of properties in their portfolio, I was the only one who was paying by check. They also gave me some sob story about how they had issues with fraudulent transactions with EFT, which is a completely SH excuse. My first thought was that it's really unfortunate that all these other tenants now have to pay a fee to have the privilege of paying their rent but the REA offered a compromise. They said that they could set me up on a specific profile, which meant that the REA would pay the fee, but that I would be required to pay via direct debit. There's no way in hell I'm letting anyone have direct access to my money, least of all a real estate agent. Mind you, I'd never raise the fee as my concern. 
Personal check fees and mailing by registered post was slightly more expensive than the fees they would be charging anyway. My issue is the lack of control, and the fact that the REA was effectively lying to me is an excuse to save money. I politely declined their offer and mailed off the second check. Real estate agency buckled. They had no leg to stand on. They openly stated that check was an acceptable payment method then got all SH when their plan didn't work on me. For the effort they tried to save reconciling my EFT payment, they had to keep doing it on top of accepting delivery of a check, cashing it and waiting for it to clear. They emailed me after they received the second check. Mavery X, we request that you make your rent payments via bank transfer from now on. Huh, remember the first email they sent me, that they were changing banks and couldn't accept EFT anymore? I wrote back, my pleasure. As you've changed financial institutions recently, can you please forward me the details of your new trust account? The response I got back was oh so satisfying. Please just use the original details you were provided, and we will let you know if they change. Effing busted. F you REA, I caught you in your effing lie. I switched back to EFT, as it was arguably more convenient for me, and despite my pettiness I wanted to act in good faith. They never changed their banking information for the remainder of my tenancy by the way. It was all a ruse. The second story is, take breaks exactly on the dot, no problem. Context. Back then when I was in high school, I was working at a crepe place in the food court. My boss, Tammy, is a Chinese lady. I'm Chinese too. Chinese people always like to bend the rules a bit. Asking you to work OT or shave time off your break was normal, but this was in Richmond, BC. I was always working eight hour shifts after school, and because it was a small storefront, there were two other people besides me, Kevin and manager. Kevin was my friend since elementary, and the manager was a really chill dude. It was 6.50 p.m., the store was busy as hell, we had a long line of customers, and all three of us were working our A off. Tammy was at home, churning out crepes. Soon it was 7, and it was my time for my 30 minute unpaid break. Kevin was supposed to get his at 7.30. But the line was super long, and I thought it would be a D move to leave my coworkers there while I eat my lunch. Or dinner, same difference. Eventually I went on break at 7.15ish, and I was gonna take my long 30 minute unpaid break. At 7.30, Kevin went on break and a few customers came to order food. My manager handled it no problem. Then Tammy calls me during my break and says she saw me through the security camera that I was taking a longer break, which I wasn't, and demanded that I go back, even when I was only halfway through my break. Of course, I protested and told her the situation. She said, you have so many problems, just go back to work. Just take your break at the time you were supposed to, not a minute early and not a minute late. You don't need a 30 minute break, go back to work now. Rough Chinese to English translation, and this is the part where Chinese people try to bend the rules. I told her my phone's connection was bad, and that I couldn't hear the last part she was saying, and asked if she could text it to me. Sure enough, she did. A few days later I was on a shift working with her fiancé, a Korean gentleman that didn't speak English that well. He mostly just worked in the back, making batter and stuff for the crepes, albeit at a very slow pace, cause he knows he's not gonna get fired. P.S. Isn't this a conflict of interest? Kevin had volleyball tournaments so he called in sick ahead of time, and Tammy didn't bother to call in to someone else to man the store. My break was at 7 as well, and as expected a huge line formed in front of the store. I took off my apron and went to get food. I purposefully sat in front of the store, within view of the security camera and started chowing down. Tammy called me, and it went as follows. Tammy, go back to work, it's so busy. Me, I'm on my break. Tammy, you already rested, now it's time to go back to work. It's 7.13. I just sat down with the food that I ordered. Me. Uh, no. Last time you told me to go on my break on the dot. Tammy. Don't you see that he's working all by himself? Don't you have any sympathy? Me. Last time I worked my A off and you forced me to eat only half of my lunch and told me to work 15 minutes unpaid. You didn't have any sympathy at that time. Plus, it's not like you're gonna fire him anyway. If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna finish eating my food before it gets cold. Bye. I hung up and Tammy started bombarding my phone. I ignored it and I ate until 7.29, after which I put on my apron, which took 30 seconds tops, and I was behind the counter before 7.30. She texted me afterwards and told me that she would be docking my pay for an additional 30 minutes because I didn't help out during the break. I took a screenshot of that conversation and sent it right back to her, along with the previous screenshot I took of our conversation, where she told me to work during my break. I told her she can dock my pay all she wants, but I'll send this to the Ministry of Labor along with a letter telling them that she hired her fiancé. She fired me the next shift because I wore a graphic tee under my apron. She told me it was unsightly because my graphic tee had a depiction of a slice of pizza that negatively impacted the reputation of the store. 
I send to the Ministry of Labor, and I made sure everyone I knew knows that Tammy is in fact a Karen. The last story is, Windows called about my Unix system. This was a couple of years ago. Some guy with an Indian accent called me to tell me that he was calling from Windows, and they had detected signs that my computer was infected with a virus. Aside from the horror movie implications of an operating system calling me on the phone, I had no Windows systems. I buy old hardware and install whatever will run on it. At the time, I had a couple of boxes that I'd owned for years running Mac System Aid, and another couple running Unix variants. The two that were actually running when I got the call were the Unix boxes. I told the guy that I had no Microsoft systems running on my hardware, and he insisted that he was calling from Windows, which had nothing to do with Microsoft. He really, really wanted to help me fix my computer. I was kind of irritated, and repeated that I had no MS or Windows systems and I hung up. And they called me right back. Well, alrighty, let's do this. At this point, my irritation had developed a malicious edge, and I agreed to let them help me remove the virus. Note that I've already told them that I have no MS or Windows software on my computers. If at any point they had asked me what operating system I was using, I would have been happy to tell them. Have you ever known a Linux geek who responded to your Linux questions at mind-numbing length? I would have been happy to play that role for them, but with Unix instead of Linux. If they had only asked, I would have described my computer setup to them in endless detail until they hung up. But they didn't. Apparently, if you're calling from Windows, all operating systems are Windows. So he started by asking me to click on an icon, the name of which I forget. I used a window manager with no icons, so I told him honestly that the icon wasn't there. He wanted me to click on the start button. I saw no start button. No, it's not in the lower left corner. Yes, I'm positive. We tried a few other things, but nothing worked. He wanted to access certain files, and I looked for them for him, but they couldn't be found anywhere. It's amazing my computer was able to run at all, without critical Windows system files in the right places. At this point, he realized that he needed to see and control my desktop. My window manager isn't a desktop interface, by the way, so he wanted me to open Internet Explorer. Sadly, there was no IE icon, but I offered to open my favorite web browser, which offer he accepted. He had me navigate to a site that offered a freeware remote desktop controller. Following his instructions, I downloaded it. At the command line, I typed the name of the installation file and pressed the Enter key. Oddly, Windows installation software won't run on a Unix system. It's kind of too bad. I wanted to know how he would react when he saw the user interface on my computer and discovered that a system that is not Windows is actually not Windows. At this point, it began to dawn on him that he wasn't working with complete information. Since all operating systems are Windows, the only possibility was that I wasn't following instructions. I was toying with him. I've never seen a Bollywood movie, but he started to sound like my idea of a Bollywood police inspector. I suspect you of not following my instructions. I was crushed. I had been completely honest. I had answered all his questions, and I had followed all of his instructions fully. I was so devastated by his accusation that I hung up. Actually, I hung up because the conversation had devolved into his accusations, followed by my protestations of innocence, which spawned another round of accusation and protestation of innocence, which spawned another round and so on. I detected runaway recursion and shut it down. But before I hung up, he asked why. If I was following his instruction, nothing had worked. And because I was being completely honest, I told him it was because he was an incompetent idiot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.